What's up guys, Chef Dale Taldi here. It's October, we are all in on fall cooking and getting down with our braises. So this dish here today is red wine and coffee braised short ribs with smashed carrots. So let's get started. It starts with getting this beautiful Dutch oven to a nice smoky temperature because we need to get a sear on these short ribs. So it starts with, let's get a little bit of oil in the pan. Let's season our short ribs aggressively. So get a lot of salt into this. So these here are boneless short ribs. They're beautiful, they have a ton of fat on them. It's what's gonna keep these nice and moist. So um, before we get cooking, we have to get a nice, beautiful sear on these short ribs that are gonna develop a lot of flavor. So, you know, when I'm building a braise, or most dishes, right, I'm looking for salty, sweet, bitter, sour. Um, it's kind of that, the palate of an Asian, um, of Asian cuisine. Balancing all, a balancing act of all these different um, flavors that, you know, kind of get onto your palate. Um, this isn't necessarily an Asian dish, but I still love the ethos of like touching all those uh, flavor profiles when you're making a dish. So, you know, I chose to use coffee because it adds a beautiful bitterness to, um, to this dish. And it reduces down with the red wine and the tomato paste to really make a um, sweet, sour, salty, bitter um, uh, braising juice. And really, when you're talking about braising, right, it's all about this beautiful liquid that you create by uh, cooking down your proteins or your vegetables in this liquid. So this is what you're looking for in your short rib, right? A nice caramelization or a Maillard reaction in your short rib. It's going to make this feel or taste like, um, like what you, when you have a roasted steak or a grilled steak, that beautiful crust on the outside. Now this won't texturally, um, because you're adding liquid, it'll, it won't be there, but you'll have that toasted or roasted meat flavor. We're gonna hit this with a little bit of salt or pepper. So it's really important you do not rush this process here. This is the building block of this entire dish, right? Creating a depth of flavor by browning off your meats. So once you've gotten all your meats nice and browned, in go all your aromatics. So onion, some celery, garlic, some thyme, and a bay leaf. All nice and toasted off. So we are gonna add whole carrots to this dish. I know it's, it's like funky, we cut up all the vegetables, but the reason why is because these carrots, we're gonna braise down and we're gonna pull them out and use them as our, uh, our starch or our uh, vegetable component for the rest of the braise. So I want them whole so I'm not kind of fishing out pieces of carrots um, as, I'm, uh, as we're cooking. Nice and sauteed. You can start to, start to smell the garlic and the onions and the celery. We're gonna add tomato paste. This is gonna add great body to it. Also some umami, right? Tomato has that, um, that fifth flavor, umami. We're gonna get that nice and toasted in the bottom of this pan. I'm 
Once that, once that tomato is cooked out for a minute or two, we're going to add some red wine. Really important for this, so you want to reduce this red wine a little bit because you want to cook off some of that alcohol or else it stays with the dish um, and, and it's not as a, a great flavor. Um, you want the alcohol cooked out of the red wine. Now that the alcohol is removed, we're gonna go in with our Swanson's chicken broth. This is the bulk of our, of our liquid that we use to uh, braise our short ribs. And our Javelia coffee. Like I said, I love balance, the balancing act of sweet, salty, bitter. So that is kind of our bitter note. And then to balance that, a touch of honey. We're gonna bring this up to a simmer. We're gonna add back our short ribs. Make sure that they are buried into here. And when you know, a lot, I think a big mistake that some people make when they're braising is just like covering the protein with, with a ton of liquid. Um, you know, when you're braising, you want, you want some of the, the protein to be peeking out of this liquid like it is here. You can see it kind of floating on top. One, when you put it into your oven, what's going to happen is it's going to continue to caramelize on top. But two, you're also diluting flavor. The more liquid you add to this, the, le the, uh, the less flavorful everything's going to be. So you want to start with about the liquid halfway up, whatever, whatever protein or vegetable you're braising. We're going to get a lid on this. We're going to bring this up to a boil and then drop it down to a simmer and then get it into a 350 degree oven and braise it for about hour and a half, um, two hours, nice, low and slow. Listen, it's fall, it's October, right? It's not the fast pace of, uh, it's, not, it's not the fast paced time, it's not time to uh, be rushing things, right? This is slow and low cooking, um, so be, you know, be gentle with it, be careful and have the time. You don't wanna rush this. Um, this is not something you wanna rush, but if you do, Definitely don't have the time. You definitely could use something like an Instapot, right? Or a pressure cooker. Uh, they'll help reduce some of the time. But I mean, I'm an old fashioned guy. Like I, I like a Dutch oven, into the oven. I think, you know, my kids get to see, um, you know, the process happen like in real time. And, and I love that. So this is coming up to a simmer. Get our oven ready. Drop this into the oven. You know, I think people get intimidated by braises. They how long they take, and you see that that was real time. Like it, it's about what happens in the pot after you get in, into the oven, or when you're low and slow simmering it on the stove. So, um, you know, it's 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 about getting all these accumulating the ingredients, giving them a rough chop. But as soon as they get into a pot, it's it's uh, you're halfway home. So our short ribs have been in the oven for an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes. They are nice and tender. Uh, let's pull them out. Oh boy. Exactly, you know, what we're looking for, these Carrots are nice and tender, so let's fish these out. These, remember, are going to be on the bottom of our plate. These are our mashed or like, you know, um, these are our mashed root vegetables. Like, you know, you can do potatoes. I fell in love with um, carrots cooked this way. You know, in restaurants, you make veal stock and, you know, you generally you're putting in carrots this, this big into a, a vat of beef broth for you know, anywhere between 18 to 24 hours. To me, the best part of that, obviously you're looking for the beef stock and the beef broth, but the carrots were so delicious, so tender. They soaked up all the juice from you know, the beef and the red wine that I thought to myself, why not make a dish that's just, um, to accompany that, that's just these carrots. So we're gonna get this on the stove again. We wanna reduce 
to some of this liquid that's in here because um, it's going to be the sauce for our short ribs. But we're going to bring it over here. We're going to smash our carrots. No, what's great is that sometimes you get a piece of onion, sometimes you get a little bit of thyme, some garlic into this, and it all just, you know, works itself into this beautiful carrot mash. We're gonna get a little bit of salt, re-season this up, some pepper. You know, if it's looking a little dry, what you can do is you can come back here, get some of this beautiful jus, and skim some of this beautiful fat that's on top here. So instead of like adding butter, what we're doing is we're putting the flavors of this short rib right back into these carrots. It's gonna make these carrots feel really luxurious with that beef fat that's tinted with this tomato paste and um, you know, infused with garlic and thyme and red wine and some of that coffee and honey. So there you go. Let's give this a taste. See if it's where we want it. That is amazing. I love the rusticity of it. We're gonna get some on the plate right there. We are reducing the jus on our red wine coffee short ribs. So if they're not exactly like, if the liquid isn't exactly where you want it, you know, just drop it down a little bit. You're looking for this to be, you know, um, spoonable over the short rib, right? So you wanna get some nice color out of this. So we're gonna let the braising liquid on our red wine coffee short ribs reduce, and we're gonna finish off our garnish for our short ribs, which are pomegranate seeds that are dressed with, I know it's like this super hot ingredient right now, everyone's talking about chili crisp, right? So it's basically chilies, some spices like Szechuan peppercorn, cinnamon, a clove sometimes um, that are set in, a, in an oil, right? So it's garlic and ginger and shallots sometimes, but I love this, it's gonna help brighten up. You know, we've, you've spent a lot of time to reduce and cook all of these beautiful fall flavors down. You want something to help pick it back up. So adding a little bit of um, acidity and some sweetness with the pomegranate and then dressing them with this chili crisp, I think it's gonna be in a perfect uh, um, accoutrement to our braised short ribs. So we're gonna go in there with some of this chili crisp. And if you don't love heat and you don't love spice, um, you know, pomegranate seeds, just with a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper are fantastic to help kind of um, brighten up our short ribs. Give it a taste. Beautifully spicy. So our short ribs, I have beautifully braised down. They are super nice and tender. So let's plate our, let's plate our dish. Nice piece of short rib there. Some of that jus. So put a nice amount of our pomegranate chili crisp right over the top. And if that doesn't say fall to you, I don't know what does. And that is our dish, red wine coffee braised short ribs with smashed carrots and pomegranate chili crisp. Guys, enjoy. Uh -huh.